Now, look at this. Uh, <clears throat> we decide all these things. Whatever culture looks like, we decide the culture. We decide what is normal and what is not normal. How you know today, we decided that wearing your pants below your butt, that was just normal. We decide to say things. My daughter teaches, in the, and she's in the public schools, and she said she works with uh, intervention for kids that they're going to go to the Charles Hickey School or to the Arrow Project or better jail or somewhere, and she works with them. She helps that process. Hopefully, she's able to keep them in school. And she's had uh, students grab her by the hair, pull her on the floor. I mean, it's just, she said that the year right now, this year, she told my wife the other day, it's the worst she's ever seen. And we had Compassion Commission this year, and my opinion was, overall, there were great kids. We had some of the worst kids we've yeah. ever led in this church. Yeah. That doesn't excuse people for doing things, saying things on our side that might not be acceptable. I'm not excusing anything. I'm just saying we're living in a period where culture can be decided by the will of, uh, of uh, uh, singers or by Hollywood. We can determine what is right, what is wrong, what is good, and what is evil. Come on. Because man has a free will. We can choose today to say this is acceptable, this is good, or this is okay. I can sleep around. I can smoke a little dope. I can, look, you know, you understand my world. I came out of that hellhole. And, and I know it. And so you can look at life and say, that's okay. And once you start that way, it becomes the cultural thing of acceptance. Some kid will put on a pair of weird looking shoes and that school will change and that's the culture for those kids. That's how quick it happens. They can wear a, some, somebody will come on the stage doing some you know, thing with their rap deal and wear something and every kid in town Christmas is going to have one. How many you know the will of man can set the culture? We can decide to love God or curse God or eliminate God. We can take God out of anything we want. We can take him out of school. We can take him out of anything we want. We can take God right out. How powerful does man feel that he can walk into a courtroom and with a little bit of legal jumping uh, gymnastics can take God out of something that's been going on for a hundred years in that community. Or a coach in Texas kneels down with nobody else, has a little word of prayer before his game, prays for his boys to be okay. Gets on the 50-yard line right off the field, but right at the 50. And he kneels down, has a little prayer, and now he can. Why? Somebody in Texas complained. No. Somebody in Wisconsin who's never met him, never seen him, nothing, decided he can't do that prayer. By here today. So all of a sudden, man has this power of uh, <laughs> his will. And, and it causes change that shouldn't change. Are you listening now? Yeah. Uh, I, we can decide to abandon truth or we can create our own form of truth. So change is in the hand of man. That's my whole point. We use the human will to impose changes in the world, especially right now. We see the desire to change America. How do you know? We've had politicians stand up and run on the campaign as, I'm going to change America. Well, let me ask. Change it to look like what? Change it in, into whose image? Are you listening? And all of a sudden, institutions, things that have been 200 plus years locked in, they were some of the unchangeables, have now become changed. Uncontrolled change. Are you, are you, are you getting it? 
We, we desire to see, they say, to change America from Judeo, uh, Judeo-Christian uh, uh, kind of a national view to a failed system of socialism. We're doing it right now. It's never worked. Nowhere. There's no history. And we're going to take the opinion of some college brats and we're going to take their opinion and one of them is a terrorist. That's a fact. Her brother leads one of the biggest in Somalia terrorist groups. So this person can't be far from the tree because the apple don't fall too far. So you got this thing going on and they're going to come up with a new idea about climate, about all these things. And they're going to do that. And we got something over here that has worked for 200 plus years. We're going to dump it. We're going to abandon that. Look, I don't care what it is. It's the fact that if you've done something that long, I'm going to try what you're doing before I grab what ain't been tested. You're going to understand what I'm saying in just a half a second. Stay with me. I'm, I'm going through this as quick as I can. Change from a moral nation with laws to uphold these moral beliefs as standards to an immoral nation that lives to please itself with no restraints or guidelines creating a lawless culture. Amen. How are you here? Yeah. Growing up, as bad, crazy as I was, if an older person was present, I didn't have to even have anybody around. There was nobody mean enough to tell me I had to do anything. I just, if an old man was standing there, I'd say, come here, sir. let me help you out. Come on, I'll help you out. Uh, let me open the door, ma'am. Come on. I, you know, then I go over here and knock somebody out and get drunk or get stoned, but I come back over here. You understand? Because there were certain things, certain principles that weren't up for an auction. They weren't being offered for cheap change. And if we don't come back to these things, uncontrolled change. They go further. We murder our newborn and are shocked when the kids that escape this selfish verdict kill at random what they don't like or what they dream un- deem unnecessary or unimportant. Not valued. We don't value them in the womb. How do we expect a 19-year-old to value them in the street? If we can't value them in the womb at the most innocent moment of who they are, and we can look at a 19-year-old and shoot them and watch them die because it's game and fun. There are changes happen. Hello? Wow. Other human imposed changes. For an example, I had to give you this. I'll get to the meat in just a few seconds. Hang on. Our human imposed changes, there's some more. How about scientific change? The AI, human DNA manipulation. And what are we going to do with these discoveries? Hello? We're discovering things at an alarming rate. We're discovering what we can do. A lot of discovery is held in secret. Our military and our scientists are discovering things that we aren't allowed to know about. And and there's an AI world that's going faster than we can even think. And, And the problem is, the problem with it is, is that it's, unrestrained there's no check and balance there's no time factor remember the law of time or the law of process and then there's the technological change how many know there's a lot of technological change there's a lot of un my lord there's a lot of technological change and that invades our lives all the times 
It controls our lives, our behaviors, our appetites, our selections of cars, clothes, a vacation. Come on. How do you know that these technical uh, deals out there are coming up with Snapchat? Snapchat was invented so you could show nudity and it will disappear before you get caught. So if your kids are messing with Snapchat, cut them out of it now. It's how they promote and send their nude pictures and they dissolve before some parent can catch them. Are you listening today? Economic interdependence, how we spend, uh, what we earn. How do you know this is all uh, uncontrolled change? Which nations have power to prosper? What our money is spent on by our governments. Come on. How do you know there's major economic interference, interference going on that's causing us to not have control over our money? You're paying taxes. These, these, I'm sorry, but these very unintelligent people create more uh, of our tax issues, uh, and they want to cause us to pay more taxes, hello, at an alarming rate that I can't figure out how they're going to pay for all these freebies they're going to give away. There's not enough taxes to be collected if you took everybody's paycheck. And when the simplest person is asked how they intend to do it on national television by even their own secular world, they go, I, I, well, let me talk about this. I don't want to talk about that. Good Lord. Are you listening? Now, major decisions. Major decisions of change to the definition of terms. If there's anything that really alarms me is the changing of the definition of terms. If you're a note taker, put it down. The definition of terms is being changed. Change, we use choice for killing. We know that one. How do you know they're changing the terminology for crimes? Hello? And, and so we need to get this. Now stay with me because here's where I'm going to dive in a little deeper for you. And, and some of you are following, right? Yeah. How do you know we've redefined sex? Amen. I did not have sex with that one. How do you know we've, we've redefined it? Hello? And, 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 and sex used to be between a man and a woman and now it's just anything. And how do you know we redefine marriage? Yeah. Uncontrolled change. How many of you know? We don't have enough time to know. We do with cigarettes. We know what cigarettes did. It killed. Right. But we don't have enough scientific evidence to be able to prove that a man and a man in the house with children won't twist their brains. We don't have enough history to be able to look back on and say, hmm, 40 years, 60 years of that, 100 years of that, well, we know what that does. Cigarettes, they said, finally, it's caught. They're going to do that with all this laptop and all this uh, computer, Facebook, all that mess. They're, they're going to come back. I'm telling you now they're going to come back and say, you know, we should have so, told you. We didn't tell you. Just like they did with the opium thing, they didn't tell us that those pills were going to make you addicted. Now they've been sued, and now they're bankrupt. The Purdue company that made the opiates has gone bankrupt conveniently. There's people sitting in this room that were hooked on heroin and hooked on drugs. And how do you know the consequences are huge? And because we don't have this time frame, the uncontrolled changes can take place. Put this kind of fish in the, in the Chesapeake Bay and let's see. what It's called the age of experiment. Let's experiment with your kids. Remember last two weeks ago? Let's experiment with this and that. Let's just call it the age of trying something new. 
We'll put this in there, and if it destroys everything, oops, we'll say, sorry. We're sorry your kids died of malaria, and we could have helped that not happen. DDT would have killed them. And those of you from Africa know how many people have died from these diseases. Ebola. Many of these diseases came about because of the transport of the mosquito. Not all, but many. Are you listening today? Here's some lists. Of the journey of man who's brought change. See, man's in control, remember? Man's in the control. Man is the one that can control because man has a free will. Man sets what Baltimore should look like. Man sets up what you're... If it can say to Colorado, it's fine. Women can go naked anywhere they want. From the waist up, no problem. How do you know? You know there's mothers... And you know there's born-again believers. That's not what they voted for. But have you know, because we, we advocated, we stepped back, we didn't go out there and win these people like we should. They're ruling and we're the slaves. Amen. Our kids have to go through that because we hid in the church. I'm trying. Look at this. I'll give them to you real quick and then i got to go on. The, Rem the, the Renaissance age. How many of you ever heard of that? That was during the 14th, 17th century. The age of reason, okay? The age of reason, reason came in the 18th century, characterized by critical approach to religion, uh, social, uh, philosophical matters that seeks to repudiate beliefs or systems not based on or just, uh, uh, justifiable by reason. They have to be set by reason. Thomas Paine wrote a big story, a book about it, and it became the whole way that the age of reason. How many of you know reason is a demonic thing? When you can, you know, that's what Satan did to Eve. He said, Eve, did God say? How many of you know that made her go, well, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know, maybe that's the, well, I don't know, is that what he meant? See, that's that reasoning, age of reasoning. And if you don't have a law of absolute, then you can reason away anything you want. It's only because I have this book called the Bible and I chose to say it's an absolute fact what's in here and that I'm born again, washed by the blood because of the truth of this book. I have a boundary set around my life that says these are the absolutes I won't give up. Wow. Still there? And then we have the modern age. That, that's a period between 15, early uh, 1800s. And we were one billion people at that time. Listen to this. In 1827, in 1804, we were at one billion people. 1827, we were at two billion. What happened was it exploded because of the modern age, because of medicines and health care and things came on and we could get to people quicker. All the transportation things began to change. So life began to, uh, babies were born and didn't automatically die almost, you know, 50% were dying right at the womb because they didn't know what to do. Come on. Medicines had got created and so then it all began to change. When it changed, the population grew. And then there's the postmodern age. Then there's the age of secularism, and we have talked about that recently. The scientific age, which is over now. The scientific age. We're no longer in scientific. We're in experiment. See, science is based on the discovery of facts. We are no longer using science. We use a roulette table, and we spin the dice and take a chance that what I give you as medicine will work. You don't think that's true? Watch any television commercial and you'll see. You need this pill. This pill will keep your right foot on. You'll lose your hair. You'll go blind. Your liver will go bad. And you'll... <laughs> but you'll have a right foot. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? 
How many of you watch it and just go, are you kidding? I'm going to die of the bad foot. I ain't doing that. What's it called? It's called Billion Dollar Industry of Experiment. You and I are their guinea pigs. I wish I had time. There's the Age of Enlightenment. <laughs> oh, that lasted. Age of Enlightenment. The Humanistic Society. How I many you know we talked about that? 1938. That's how our schools, they took out history. They took out everything in government out of our schools so our kids couldn't be educated on how God intervened in government. The new norm is there today. How many you know that means teach the world uh, facts as it is defined by them? The new norm is we teach facts that I decide are the facts. And the one that's really what I've been saying and I'm trying to say here this morning is the fact of the experimental age. Everything today, we send people to Mars or we're to, to the moon. This experiment. We're experimenting on everything because technology is at our back shoving us down a road that we have no insight to. We have no bumper guards. We have no safety belt. We have like jumped out of a plane and forgot our parachute. Because technology is going, go! Oh, and if you don't keep up with it, if you're a kid, you're dumb. You're not accepted. You're not cool. So if you don't have the newest technology of the new kind of phone or the new kind of some kind of widget, you're just behind. You're just, you know, you're a hillbilly. Wow. We are experimenting with everything. Financial systems, bitcoins, relationships, men with men, women with women, scientific manipulations with life and death. Have you know they're messing with it? Have you know in some countries right now, the Scandinavian countries, they allow you to fool with uh, euthanasia. Yeah. And a girl went in not long ago. She was not happy. She'd been rejected and put down, and she got the doctors and everybody to agree to kill her. How do you know? We're hidden there. Wow. You say, wow, you're spinning my brain out. I'm going to. And I'm going to show you the root of it. How do you know if you have dandelions in your garden? If you can get the roots, you can kill the dandelions. How do you know if you got cancer, you get the root of that cancer, you can stop the cancer? Come on. How do you know some, where some of you came to an altar and you got down to the root of sin, and when you did, Jesus came in your life, and that changed your life? How many of you hear that? See, I got to the root of my drug problem, and it wasn't the drugs. See, we hide behind things that we say is the problem, and they're not the problem. The problem is a mask that we put on. Because there's another problem, and it's a root. Pride is not the problem. There's a root. There's a root inside that's rotten to the core. And if you don't let Jesus get in the root, your tree will keep producing rotten fruit. Thank you for watching Rock City Church Online. We pray this video sharpens and encourages you to be all that God has called you to be. You can give online at rockcitychurch.com or on the Rock City Church app. Like and share us on social media at Rock CC Baltimore. And subscribe to our channel so you don't miss the next episode or live stream.